Welcome to the Intercut Podcast, where we're looking through all of the stuff that you need to know for the Sundance Film Festival 2023 edition. We are back, breaking down everything you need to know about the tickets, breaking down everything you need to know about the movies, all of the best stuff that you should have on your horizon. And the best part about this year, Zach, is that this is the first year that Sundance is coming back. You got to go back to TIFF. We've gotten to go back to South by, but we haven't really been able to go back and sit down at the Echoes Theater, at the Egyptian Theater, be able to have that different air that you have only at mm-hmm. Sundance because you're up in the mountains. And for the first year, you'll be able to go back in theaters, but also, since it's snowing, have it in the comfort of your own home. So I'm really excited for this year, Zach. Yeah, I, I did my best to uh, try and recreate that experience last year. You know, we did our little drive-bys of the Egyptian, and I got my picture, but it's not the same. You, mm-hmm. Even if you're breathing that mountain air when you're locked in your own home or your Airbnb watching movies, it's not the same as getting to uh, take buses from theater to theater and uh, sneak meals in at the fresh Survive market. Popcorn. <laughs> it's it's not nothing quite like going to the Sundance Film Festival. So we're really excited to be returning to one of our big spots, one of our favorite par- uh, parts of the year. Uh, one Easily. of the biggest parts of the year for Intercut too, because I know a lot of people who listen to this podcast also like to participate in Sundance, whether it's in person or virtually, as that is again going to be an option this year, or though maybe a bit more limited than it's been in the past few years. We will get into all of that very mm-hmm. soon with this Sundance preview. As long as you're watching the Intercut podcast, though, remember last year. We had so many different things that we had available for the intercuties because it was virtual. And I think that alone is worth like <laughs> going to a festival for, mm-hmm. especially when it's going to be uh, from the virtual capacity. Any extra tickets that we have, uh, Zach was always on the Intercut Twitter page. If you're not following <laughs> us over on the Intercut Twitter page, I'm going to let you Intercut know right pod. now. Not only do you have all of the news, you have all of the updates, like right here that we're letting you know that this has come out. You would have known when the lineup dropped. Uh, And on top of that, when the festival comes, we will be doing a lot of giveaways because I'm sure we're going to have a lot of overlaps or different tickets. Anything that's available, you will have the first come, first no basis if you're following (laughs) over on Intercut at the Intercut pod. But before we get into all of the movies and the different categories that we have here, I always break it down in a specific way. Look back at the previous years. Whatever your favorite category is, it's bound to have your favorite movies. But you can't go into the movies without a ticket. Uh, I still have a video that I think uh, holds up from the A to Z show where I kind of break down everything you need to know about how the festival works and getting to Utah, all of the travel expenses to be there, and what's the better thing to do. Uh, Stay in Salt Lake or stay in Park City. If you look it up in a map, they're kind of far away from each other. And Park City is where all of the Sundance activities happen. That's like where Sundance is at. All the celebrities are there. But it's very expensive. Salt Lake is the bigger city where everyone flies in on, and they do have theaters that are hosting stuff. There are still celebrities walking around there, but it's a bigger city, doesn't have that festival town feel, but it's still the cheapest, best way to go in my opinion. So breaking that down, you have a couple of different festival packages, and just like last year, I broke down that the 750 package is no good in my opinion. Uh, Zach, you were telling me that last year this was around the same price that it was. And if you do the math, you're getting 10 tickets. If we're just jumping a little bit forward here so you know, these are Sundance movies, possibly Oscar winners or nominees that you're seeing early on in the year. It's $25 a ticket in person. If you buy this package right here, that's that's $75 a ticket. I don't know how ahead... (laughs) of purchasing a ticket from somebody else, is it worth paying that much of a premium for it? I can't justify it. See, the thing with these Sundance films is that there are a few that will sell out early, and and those tend to be some of the most high-profile films. Uh, We will get to the premieres section later in this video. It's probably going to be mostly films from that category because that's where you find some of the bigger-name directors, bigger-name stars. And if you are, like, dead set on seeing one of those movies in particular, then maybe it's worth springing for those bigger packages. But otherwise, like if you're just into Sundance for the exploration of it, for the ability to see new movies, I don't see any reason to pay $75 for a ticket when a $25 option is sitting right there as well. It makes no sense. I mean, you're already, what, $50 more per ticket. If I may, if you head on up there and find the uh, members little thing that you can get from Sundance, that's 60 bucks. 
with that thing, you're going to get more stuff that you don't get with this package, which is 20% off your merch. You're going to be able to also still pick early tickets. They're even going to send you some uh, secret screenings throughout the month, and it's going to let you pick the stuff early enough so that you weren't paying $50 a premium. You were just paying the $60 for the upgrade from there. So uh, again, that's not good to me. Out of the three that you see here, I'm going to tell you, this Salt Lake City in-person pass is the best possible option if you want a pass where you can just go to any single theater. Priority access. This over here doesn't even give you priority access. It's just giving you early access to the ticket to then wait mm -hmm. in line. This is priority access to any theater in Salt Lake City. Like I said, it may not be Park City, but it's going to be cheaper lodging there. It's going to be easier to travel there. You're going to have for $500 access to all 101 films if they're playing in your vicinity. This gives you access to 10. Uh, if you're willing to sacrifice the the big, you know, being in Park City feel for it, this is the best possible option you can have for 500 bucks. You can watch every single movie playing at all of the beautiful theaters yeah. at Salt Lake City. And uh, y you can always also schedule a day trip into Park City or a day thing? trip to the Sundance Mountain Resort, the original location of the yeah. Sundance Film Festival, which I've only done once in my many years going to, or I guess few years going to Sundance, but is really, no, five, really worth five it. Five is good, bro. You, you had half a decade. You should be yeah. celebrating that. <laughs> we're, yeah, at that we're, we're about to become vets right here. Once we start hitting <laughs> the double digits, but he's right with that. The Sundance Resort is probably the hardest one to get to, but if you're doing Sundance... I think even if you don't know if you'll come back, it's worth hitting once in your life for sure. Yeah, um, even just to walk around it. It's a just to walk beautiful it, mountain they location. Do, yeah. They do have a screening room there. Do not mess up and book a screening there. So may, we'll get into that about where you're scheduling your stuff <laughs> well, on. But. It's a good place to see a movie. It's not a good place to see a movie if you have to see another movie very soon right after afterwards. Right afterwards. <laughs> or if there's a snowstorm while you're on your way there, which happened to us for Wind River. Oh. But there is a second line of options over here. Uh, and I think it's also really good. If you're just a person who doesn't want to go through the whole lineup, which we're about to do for you right now, the awards winner package 250 mm -hmm. all of the selections that they say are the best of the best you will have access to them my only worry here and i don't think it should be too much all of these should be the virtual ones i don't think that it's possible for a premiere that's only in person to be on here so then you buy the awards package and you're like in indiana not being able to stream it i think you should be good uh, well, so a lot of a lot of intercuties bought this package last year and i think they liked it i mean it says in in person uh i don't it's know if only it... in person oh my bad Okay, there should be an online one. Okay, right here. I was yeah. I was I was mixing them up. There's the awards package online, which is even fifty dollars less. So I guess you can combine them right there uh, between these two. Uh, even in person, I still think that this is worth it because uh, as long as you're in Park City, they do the best of fest screenings like for the last two days. It's just nothing but all of the winners. Uh, the ignite package though is the reason why I was able to do Sundance to begin with. Mm -hmm. Back in my wee lad days, early on, I was still able to. If you're in between the ages of eighteen and twenty five, there is no better package than this. For two fifty, you get ten tickets. That's already <laughs> better than this. Yeah. You get to select them early. But then they're giving you five extra vouchers for online films. When I did this, it was five vouchers. They said show up uh, to a screening and see if they let you in. The fact that you could use it for this new technology that is online films, absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend this because not only do you get 15 available tickets to watch movies, if you're in the Ignite thing, they allow you into the Adobe clubs. They'll have like these Ignite uh, events where they're giving you free food, free sweaters. My first year was fantastic because of this Ignite package right there. So if you have the means to get there, obviously it's hard if you're between 18 and 25, but if you have the means to do so, this is the bad boy to get right here. The yeah. Ignite package by Adobe. World Cinema package, also worth it. But we'll yeah. get into some of the stuff over here. Like I said, it's $25 for all both weeks. It used to be 20 the first week and 25 the second week, but yeah. they've changed that a little bit because now they have the online ticketing. The Express Pass, for those who want to know, I still believe it's $3,500. Yeah. But you can go into any theater you want. I would it, I would recommend it, I guess, if you were making text write-ups, but yeah. it's only the second half, and uh, it's a little bit steep. Yeah. And if we scroll down a little bit more, we can see some of the online specific offerings as well, yep. with like the uh, festival package that gives you 10 movies for 300. So uh, those are $30 a pop, maybe a little bit better. So if you are going that online route, uh, you know, you can get a pretty big package of films that way. Uh, but the single festival uh, tickets are only 20. So there is like that, there still is that disparity between buying s single movies at a time and then going for the larger festival package. But if I may, it will give them to you early and there's a difference right. between the online to the in-person. 
the in-person, you need two tickets if you're bringing a mm-hmm. guest. Reportedly, allegedly, supposedly, as long as my, Mr. Redford don't know, <laughs> you can get an online ticket and have a good Sundance party at your home. Reportedly, mm-hmm. allegedly, supposedly. But I agree. <laughs> uh, this is a good one to have if you wanted to get the early tickets because a lot of stuff will be uh, online that is playing in the competition. Once we get to the uh, lineup, yeah. we'll tell you what's split. Same thing, the awards winners package, the World Cinema package. It's cheaper. It's online. You don't have to travel, so I guess you're saving that money. You can have a you can have a guest there as well. Uh, most of these packages also come with the Explorer Pass. To break what, down what that is, is that they have a couple of VR stuff. If you have a VR headset at home, boom, you could do one of the Sundance ones. But all 64 short films will be available for you. Uh, so for 25 bucks, I guess you can subtract it <laughs> from your big one over here. It still makes the tickets pretty expensive. Yeah. But the Explorer Pass, something that you can get on its own, uh, and it runs throughout the entire festival. I think the Explorer Pass is the one thing that's available globally. So no matter where you are, you may not be able to have access to all the features, but you will have access to all of the shorts. So those are the tickets. All of the dates are online. You can come to this landing page right here where it lets you know uh, everything that you need to know about the tickets and packages, which are available already. Like I said, highly recommend getting the membership in case you wanted to get some merch. I just had my first thing come in right here, Zach, as you can see. Uh, Let me expand this a little bit. Uh... I had a couple things that I ordered, but the new one is this Sundance kind of like office mug that they got going on. It's the new logo uh, that definitely seems more like a patch, almost like a like a train. I, I, I like it. Yeah. The only thing is, it's kind of just like a block printed on. So <laughs> out of a lot of the Sundance ones, I have that orange one. It has not beaten it. I even have this one right here. The uh, one from a couple years ago, two years ago. I think this nice. one was even better because it's got more of the design. Still kind of has that, yeah. as you can see, like That's the a block one. that it begins it. But you can't fully see it here, but it's just funny that there's a different black between the patch <laughs> and the other stuff. But, uh, Not perfectly I will be judging seamless. The rest, yeah, I'll be judging the rest of the merch as it comes in. Hopefully this year they don't send the shredded uh, addresses of other Sundays <laughs> <laughs> orders. But yeah, we shall see. We'll break down all the merch and stuff, especially when we get all gathered. We'll, we'll be all, all dripped out when it comes to the festival. But after breaking down all the ticket packages and everything that you need to know, it is time to go through the festival. Uh, we are going to be going piece by piece, each single category. I always recommend go to the Sundance Wiki. Go to each year. Look through those titles because I think the Wiki does the best job of just listing it in a nice little like uh, um, chart. See which one of these tends to make your favorite movies. Yeah. Uh, Focus we, in on that competition. We have our recaps from the past couple festivals. If you need some reminders of uh, what films were in what sections. I'll, I'll also maybe, as we go along, do little reminders of uh, some of the highlights last year from each there. category. For sure. So just starting it off from the top, uh, giving you our three picks. Zach, for the U.S. dramatic competition, the big one, all yes. of these will be streaming virtually. So no matter where you are, you will have the ability to watch any of these, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah. What were your top three from this? Yeah, so uh, the U.S. Dramatic Competition, which last year, by the way, featured Cha-Cha Real Smooth, I think a lot of people's favorite from that, uh, featured Duel, featured Emergency, and featured another award winner in Nanny. This year, there's a lot of really exciting stuff in there as well. Uh, I'll start it out with Shortcomings, a a film that... Uh, I'm intrigued by partially because it's directed by somebody that I like quite a bit, Randall Park. Uh, I believe this is his feature directorial debut. I think so. Uh, And it's about um, a group of friends and seems very kind of like slice of life. I think Sundance tends to have these very kind of low-key, realistic friend dynamic comedies that... Uh, intrigue me and knowing the type of humor that he tends to put into his roles I I feel like I could end up really vibing with a film like Shortcoming so uh, it's definitely one that intrigued me from the start it's also got the writer Zach I don't know if you've seen this movie yet Uh, he's a novelist Paris 13th District is one of like the big ones on my watch list for this year and the fact that he's writing it uh Makes me think it's a comedy that's going to have a lot of substance to it, but totally. I, I'm also excited for this one. Uh, I hope he's able to knock it out of the park. I, I did not like Blockbuster as much as I wanted to from Netflix, but it's got a pretty good cast, so I'm excited yeah. to see what he does with this. Um, shortcomings, playing in the U.S. dramatic. What else you got? Um, I have sometimes, I think, about dying. I think sometimes one of the things that I like to do with Sundance is not pay overly 
too much attention to what's going on in a film and it but if like an image and a title grabs me then i i'll put it on my list and this is one of the standout titles i think from the festival so far uh it's also daisy ridley one of the the first roles I feel like I've seen her in basically post Star Wars, uh, mm-hmm. but a, it's about a woman who uh, who daydreams it during the daytime hours and thinks about her own death. It's an intriguing idea, and yeah, uh, definitely yeah. piqued my interest as well. This one looks pretty good. She's also producer on it, which uh, has me yeah. really intrigued to see what the next step of it. Uh, her career is going to be and the short is not on YouTube sometimes I think about dying it played at Sundance a couple years ago we were able to hunt it down so just search it up on YouTube and you'll get a little bit of this it's like a dramedy that they're going Mm -hmm. for it's got an interesting tone so I'm excited to see uh, where they take this one so sometimes I think about dying good pick and your number one I think is very similar to one that I have in my top three as well. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely pumped to see Magazine Dreams Uh, one of our favorite actors right now up and coming actors is Jonathan Majors he's just so interesting uh, with the different film roles he takes and I think he's found a lot of different sides to um, how he can present himself here he's definitely like continuing on that Creed 3 run of body transformation by playing a bodybuilder here Um, I, I yeah I mean it's Intriguing enough on its own. Um, I think sometimes an actor is enough to get you in the door for films like these. So uh, it, that's w- my main reasons for being intrigued about it. How about you? Uh, it's the boy, Jonathan Majors. It's yeah. the man, Jonathan Majors. It's the icon, Jonathan Majors. Uh, Haley Bennett's also in this movie. So that right. is another big reason because I think she is fantastic. Taylor Page is also in this. Yeah. Oh. Harriet Samson Harris is also a little bit of a of a bit My in this movie. So girl. it's like it's yeah. already cast. You're gonna add producers that are kind of decent. Dan Gilroy's done a couple things here and there from Nightcrawler <laughs> and some series. So I'm excited for this on all cylinders. Only one worry. Director's only done one other thing, and I might have to re- revisit it, but I don't remember liking this one too much. <laughs> but we'll see. Cause other than that, I I, I think it looks fantastic and uh yeah, anything with Jonathan Majors is a, is a sell for me easily. So totally. uh, that's also in my top three. Uh, I'm going to agree with you on that one. Uh, to fill in my other top three for this category, Fair Play. Have you heard anything about this one that's coming from Chloe DeMont? Someone Not who just really. got signed under a big production company. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've heard about the production company T Street. So a little guy named Ryan Johnson and his buddy who started creating a whole slate of movies, especially thrillers, under their umbrella. Uh, we've heard a lot of people talk about different movies that are going to be at the festival and thinking that it's kind of a weak list because they wanted to see the big names on there. Not realizing mm-hmm. that when Ryan Johnson was starting off, you probably would have ignored those movies either. So noting the different producers that you have on these things, it put Fair Play right on my list. This is a thriller that's uh, taking place, I want to say in New York, and like this couple's kind of got this back and forth going on with each other and considering the script uh, and the direction comes from the same person who's already worked under Johnson and he's given it its approval, uh, I'm all in with this one. Fair Play, a romance thriller coming from the production company T. Very uh, cool. Theater Camp is at the top Ooh. of my list though. I'm very excited for this one, too. It is being pitched as an improvised story. It comes from Nick Lieberman, who uh, I guess is like really big friends with Ben Platt. You guys were telling me uh, that Ben Platt, Beanie Feinstein. Yeah. And And Molly Molly Gordon. Gordon, who's coming in with her directorial debut feature film, if I'm not mistaken. They're co-directing this. I think she's funny in everything she's in. And this is a story about like their theater camp that they grew up in. They had like a through line following the story. And then they went, all right, every single person who we're hiring, who they've got, like Jimmy, great Jimmy names Taro, here. Tetra, who's done some great stuff. Ayo, who I think has blown up for a lot of people, especially mm-hmm. after the bear. They said, come in, follow the story and then take it wherever you want to go. <laughs> It, it, it could be a failure, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I trust Molly Gordon. I like what she's brought to the table. Some of my favorite movies have involved her as a really big supporting role. So mm-hmm. to see her behind the camera, uh, Theater Camp is easily in my top three of what I'm looking forward to. And Will Ferrell's producing it. I think Adam McKay would have been a part of it, but it's now just Will Ferrell. <laughs> so uh, I'll leave that there. But yeah, my picks again are Fair Play, Magazine Dreams, and Theater Camp from the U.S. Dramatic. And Definitely. then run through yours, Zach. Uh, I had, ooh, I, I closed out of mine, uh, shortcomings, oh, 
Um, I put Magazine Dreams in mine as well. And what was my third one? Uh, you had Sometimes, sometimes I Think About Dying. Exactly. And if we could throw one more out there quickly. Sure. Uh, a Thousand and One also okay. kind of jumped out to me. Uh, not just because it stars Tiana Taylor, uh, but it's got a pretty intriguing premise about a mother uh, dealing with a son in foster care. But also this is one of the films that is already attached to Focus Features. Uh, you saw which, that, right? Yeah, sometimes that can be like hit or miss when a studio decides to debut their big movie uh, or, or their cheating. movie at Sundance. <laughs> uh, I do remember that not too long ago, Focus Features brought Never Rarely Sometimes Always to Sundance. Uh-huh. So they've got a, a decent streak, at least with Sundance movies. And they're back with some other stuff. Uh, yeah. To add, all, let me see, make sure I get it right. All Dirt Roads, Taste of Salt. Picked up by A24, yep. also playing in the U.S. dramatic. So we've we've always noticed these little things here. And uh, the writers worked a lot with Apple TV Plus for Surface. So there's a chance that this goes somewhere. And Sheila teams in this. I thought she's been really good in a couple of movies. Um, also, this movie's produced by some guy named Barry Jenkins. Never heard of him. What's he done? Uh, you know, he just worked with another producer named Adele Romanski, who's done Moonlight, uh, <laughs> After Sun, and never, rarely, sometimes, always, Zach. Right, right. This is her new thing that she's bringing to the festival. So it's all these little things to look out for. But yeah, besides her top three, we are always ready to get surprised with other ones. All Dirt Road, Taste of Salt, A Thousand and One looks great. I, I agree, Tiana Taylor looks pretty awesome in this. And then uh, just a couple of other ones from The Accidental Getaway Driver to have mm-hmm. on your list. Fancy Dance looks like it's going to be a pretty interesting movie. So a bunch of other ones that we'll be covering uh, come the festival, especially as it begins. Any free tickets that we'll have, this is going to be a big category that we might throw your way. Yeah. Uh, This is probably the premier Sundance category. This is where most of the movies that are known as being Sundance discoveries, they They premiered in this category. So if you are... If you're going for like the true Sundance experience, this is the category to pay attention. This is the one. Exactly. Good point. All right, then. Moving on from the U.S. Dramatic, one of the best categories on there, we are going to the World Dramatic, which has mm. pretty much all the same lineup. they just not from the U.S. For the most part, they always finagle it a little bit, but uh, we had a bunch of really great picks from the World Dramatic. If you have a top three, Zach, uh, hit me yeah. with it. Yeah, so last year, The World Dramatic featured a lot of great films. It featured Leonor Will Never Die, which has shown up at a couple other film festivals. We love that one. Uh, Bride and Charles, which I thought was delightful. Girl Picture, which I People feel like going. got like a Gotham nom or something like that. So, uh, And You Won't Be Alone. So pretty exciting movies uh, make their debut sometimes here in World Dramatic. Uh, the one that jumped out to me first was Bad Behavior. Uh, this is a, a, a bit of what we're talking about in that like it's not just... Uh, foreign language films. It's it's literally just international. This is films a film, is a film yeah. uh, produced in New Zealand, but uh, with Jennifer Connelly. It's a very American face to it, I guess. Uh, ben Wishaw is also uh, a, a co-star He's a in producer. it. Producer, yeah, as well. Uh, and it's about a woman seeking enlightenment. Uh, a woman who was a former child actress seeking enlightenment uh, from her guru guru at a silent retreat. Sounds intriguing enough, and I like the talent behind it, so uh, that one jumped out to me uh, immediately. Uh, La Pesera. It also comes... Oh, I don't know ahead. if you've seen her. She's actually an actress, so you saying the the story, I was like, interesting, so then it's her. She's been in a bunch of movies. She's the main girl from a beautiful from Beautiful Creatures, and now she's turned into a director slash writer for this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued by that one, definitely. Uh, do you see anything about La Pesera? Yes, sir. Talk about it. Uh, So this is one that is a co-production between Puerto Rico and Spain. And it's about a woman whose cancer has returned after years of remission uh, who decides to kind of, well, she sort of like breaks free from her treatments. And Mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, just something about that premise seemed intriguing to me. It's got an intriguing image as well. You know, you're going off of just little like glimpses of a film. And when an image can can catch you, I feel like uh, that's all you need sometimes. That's a good sign. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, And then the last one that I have from World uh, Dramatic is Animalia, uh, which is from... uh, is from France and Morocco and Qatar. Uh, yeah. And it's about a pregnant woman who finds freedom after aliens land. Yes. 
I don't really want to know much more than that. It sounds intriguing already. Yeah, it just looks like it's going to take you. And the images for it yeah. were really awesome. And yeah, again, that's just one where it just... Even her... She had a Sundance short. It was called, So What If the Goats Die? <laughs> it won the Grand Jury Prize. There's something about just the way she makes titles. I don't know as a sci-fi thriller that's also on my list. It just made it right outside of my top ones. Um, but one of the ones I want to put on your radar, I don't know if you saw this. There's a movie called Scrapper. It's this comedy drama. And this guy yeah. has directed like a bunch of music videos for like local British rappers, Muffins and Son. Mm. Produced by Michael Fassbender. Oh. I'm like, all intriguing. right. Good to see him producing there. Got an actor coming in. The next movie right on the list, Shada, another one that's playing in the world dramatic, a drama coming from Nura Niasari, executive producer, Kate Blanchett. So you have a lot of big acting names who aren't really a part of the festival, but they kind of are shepherding new movies in. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm really excited to see some of those on my list. But I, I have a completely different top three. Uh, there is a dramedy called Mama Cruz, which I comes from a filmmaker. It's so intriguing. She, she specialized in docs and then decided, you know what? Let me go make some feature films. She, I think she just made a, a previous one. So this is like her second one. And she's decided to make it on her mother, who she found all of these like belongings to and realized she never knew this person. So she's saying that this is her, not necessarily documentary, but biopic on her mom after realizing she's more than a mom. She's also a woman. I don't know. I, this, I like that retrospective of looking back and being able to see someone so close to you uh, in a different light. So Mama Cruz is in my top three for the world dramatic. I also have When It Melts. Here you have another actress turned director. Uh, Viri Baitens, I hope I'm saying her name right. She was an ugly Betty bro. She was also in one of my favorite movies, dude, from 2012, The Broken Circle Breakdown. Yeah. This, if you have not seen this movie, it, it, it's, it's beautiful. It's one of my favorites. I will be mentioning this director very soon because he has a spotlight <laughs> one year. But for right now, we're talking about uh, Virlay, sorry. Her movie, which she also stars in, is based on a book. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, comes from Belgium. So this is a movie that I'm very excited for to see how she does that transition from working under a bunch of great directors and then seeing what she could bring to the table. So I have this at my number two spot, When It Melts. Um, and definitely do watch Broken Circle Breakdown. It is, it is incredible. But my top pick is a horror adventure movie hmm. called Sorcery. Pablo yeah. Lorraine and his brother Ooh. are producing like three movies at the fest. And this is one that's super at the top of my list. It comes from Christopher Murray. Uh, and it's pretty much this like remote town where this girl realizes that there's like a whole organization of like not wizards, but like sorcerers. Mm -hmm. That's all I need to know. Uh, originally it's called Brujeria it takes place in the 1800s I feel like this is going to knock the setting out of the park so yeah. my number one sorcery that one so has a bit about like revenge in the uh, plot well, as well need? and I, I was wondering if it's going to turn into like this year's Nightingale or something But dude and I was thinking even something like what was last year's that was also in the world where she was like a vampire uh, but not, like a you witch. won't be alone I get like inklings of that as well, so I'm curious yeah. to see how they'll how they'll push it. Last one to mention here is this little movie called Heroic. I believe this one is from Mexico and Sweden, surprisingly. Mm. Um, and this is a person who's made a previous movie called Workforce that won the the Mexican Academy Awards over there, the Ariel Awards, and <clears throat> it, it it's got a pretty good cast because I've seen the cast in like Babel. A cop mm. movie. This is a cast that like only takes really interesting projects in these festival films. So. I just want to make sure I have Heroic on the radar because uh, it, it looks like it's going to be a pretty hefty one as well. But cool. uh, those are our picks for the world dramatic. We will be uh, compiling all of these in an easier format just so you have the, the picks available there. But like I said, all of this is up there on the website for you to be able to check out and see what the best ones are. As we move on to the documentaries, we did U.S. dramatic, world dramatic. Now we got U.S. doc and world doc. Out of the documentaries, Zach, for U.S., what stood out to you? So last year, this was a, a category that featured Aftershock, Descendant, Fire of Love, I Didn't See You There, Navalny, a couple films that might get shortlisted for this year's Best Documentary at the Oscars. Uh, as for Sundance 2023, there are a couple titles that stood out to me. Uh, the first one being um the cult at the end of the yes, world a, a look into the cult that's behind the 1984 or so the, the 1995 Tokyo subway nerve nerve attacks uh yeah I'm just 
an intriguing premise for a documentary for sure. So that one jumped to the top of my list. I don't know if you had any other thoughts on it. That was in my top three easily. That's yeah. all you need to know. A creepy picture like that. And you're like, yeah, this is a, a scenario that I think I would set for a, yeah. a, a nice, easy, breezy doc for. Uh, the second pick that I had was Bad Press, which is about a reporter trying to do her job and being censored for it in her uh, in her. Uh, uh, reservation. She's uh, mm -hmm. among the Muscogee Creek Nation. And, you know, I think it's a lot of times we also see these films that look at smaller microcosms of larger problems. And uh, yep. there's a whole lot to talk about the censoring of press right now. So uh, that that title also stood out to me. And I feel bad because these are the first two alphabetically, but they're also just the ones <laughs> that really, really looked intriguing to me. And it's not like uh, Sundance has a bad track record when it comes to reporting movies. Yeah. I think they, they tend to knock it out of the park. So, yeah, those are pretty solid. All right, switching up my alphabetical order bit, uh, I'm going to Nam Jun Paik. Moon is the oldest odyssey uh, about an artist who was one of the uh, influential artists of the uh, electronic medium i don't know uh he says he coined the term electronic superhighway here he's not an artist that i'm familiar with to be completely honest but i think you know there are sometimes you get sundance has documentaries about artists you know and artists you don't know and i think i like to gravitate towards the ones about people i don't know as my means of of entering a world that i didn't know about before so uh that one just jumped out to me uh yeah. among the artist profiles that are in the uh in the lineup I had that as my number four, dude. There's something about okay. it that yeah. I think looks really interesting, and I agree with you. Uh, this is the original film that they're kind of, like, focusing on because it was mm -hmm. so hard for me to find the regular one for Nam June Pike. I come to find out as I'm, like, searching it that it didn't even have a title. It was Untitled Nam June Pike Stephen Yoon Fab Five Freddy Project. Ooh. My man's a producer on it, if not the narrator. Uh, the thing is also going to have a bunch of archival footage from David Bowie, Andy Warhol, this seems like the, one of the best docs that's going to be coming out of the festival uh, yeah. on, on probably like one of the most interesting figures because they call him the father of video art. So, yeah, I, I'm really intrigued for that one. Uh, I wanted to put this one on your list, bro. A Still Small Voice. It's this movie that's coming from director Luke Lorenzen. I don't know if that name sounds familiar to you. Oh, man. Yes, I sir. know exactly who you're talking about. He made a little movie a couple years ago that kind of stuck with you a lot. All right. About All right. Uh, ambulances with Midnight Family. I got a new Family. number one in this category. I know how much you like this movie, so A Still Mall Voice is definitely one that I think you're going to want to have on the horizon because when you get a documentarian, yeah. it almost doesn't matter what they're talking about. They just know how to tell it in a way that's going to be a gut punch. And yeah. uh, I remember when you put Midnight Family on our radar, it was one of the best of fest movies we caught that year. Mm -hmm. Insane cinematography because the way that that movie, the events that are happening there, there's no way to set up a shot. Like, you have to do it at the moment like there are people dying <laughs> during that movie and the shots that he gets there are insane so i can't imagine what he's going to do with this one uh, i wanted to make sure that one was on your radar it's about an aspiring hospital chaplain who begins a year-long residency in spiritual care to take care of herself so i can only imagine where it, where it goes from there uh some other ones to mention before i get to my top three the giovanni project or uh the nikki giovanni project about yeah. going to mars where they're practically talking to people especially having having seen avatar recently this idea of like the back and forth and keeping these video diaries to make sure that they don't go from what it seems insane when they're going up into space uh last year we had a boxing movie that kind of talked about like mexicans who are mexican-american and mexicans mm -hmm. who come from mexico this year there's one called going varsity in mariachi this looks like it's going to be the one, Zach. So I'm putting this out there. It was just on the cusp of making my top three, but I'm not going to lie. It may end up leaving in my top five. Uh, it even comes from producer Luis A. Miranda Jr., which is hmm. actually senior. So uh, <laughs> Papa Miranda is in there. So in, in case you wanted to see what the what they may be up to, uh, Pops is over there producing this movie. And I think it's going to be very interesting from the different perspectives of the teens who join uh, this mariachi band for different reasons. Um I think it's going to be pretty fascinating. But my top cool. three, uh, I'm agreeing with you. The I'm Caught one. I yeah. <laughs> it, it looks, when, when something says Doc Thriller, that just intrigues <laughs> me, man. Yeah. Uh, but my top two, Little Richard, I Am Everything. I am a person who believes that Little Richard is one of the greatest artists that we've had in here, and they have not mm -hmm. done him justice. Every actor who they get, even when they get so close to it, they run out of steam in the new Elvis movie. They got someone who was really good with it, but they knew. Never put too much Little Richard in an Elvis movie. <laughs> Because you won't be paying attention to Elvis. Uh, this comes from uh, Lisa Cortez, who did 
producing on Precious. Uh, she hmm. recently directed All In, The Fight for Democracy, which I thought was a, a decent political doc. Um, and yeah, it's just the story of Little Richard. I hope they go all out with it. I hope they do the man justice. And yeah, I'm really excited for it. it. It seems like they're going to go all out, but it's also 98 minutes. So I don't know how all out you can go. I think he's someone who deserves everything. But Little Richard, I am everything. Will probably give us a little bit of it. My cool. top one, though, is this one called The Disappearance of Sheer Height. It's the thing they have at the cover. Yeah. I read the synopsis and it was everything that I needed to know. It's about a best selling book of a woman who was trying to liberate people. But how did she disappear after revealing all of this bodily autonomy for women? Uh, that's all I needed to know. And then I find out oh, yeah, it comes from the director who did Crip Camp. Easily at the okay. top of my U.S. documentary list, considering that that movie went all the way to the Oscars yeah. and killed it when it was at Sundance itself. So a lot of really good movies from the U.S. dramatic. I, this one, The uh, Disappearance of A Sheer lot of Heights. returning champions from Sundance past. That's what I'm saying. And again, it doesn't matter what story they cover. It's how they tell their story that you know is going to make an impactful difference. Uh, moving on to the world documentary. Yeah. What are some picks from there from the previous years that have stood out? So last year we got, we met in virtual reality. We got mm. all that breathes, which has played like Khan and Tiff and New York Film Festival. Yeah, that, that did uh, a run. Yeah. And then a couple other films that I don't think have had as bigger uh, celebrations yet in Midwives and the Territory, but I'm sure we'll start seeing them pop up in uh, critics lists and year end lists for best documentary. But mm -hmm. also an intriguing category that has given us a lot of stuff. I think this is also uh, the category that had Honeyland, which went on to get a couple Oscar nominations a couple of years go. ago. Yeah. So, yeah, really solid category with a lot of really great picks. Uh, just taking you to all of the other stuff that's happened around the world. I, I want to say, and I could be mistaken, what's the one that had me crying last year? It came from this, didn't it? With the oh, orphanage. Yeah, the orphanage one. I'm forgetting yeah. the name of it right now, but yeah, so I remember. You would you would think you come to a festival, right? You've traveled all this way. World drum, world documentary. I'm not sitting around for those. Hey, this is the category that somehow has always been the one to get a tear uh, out of me. So let's talk a about this House made of category. splinters was that <laughs> one that got you... <laughs> House made of oh, splinters. Yeah. yeah, you know, I couldn't even hide in public with people. No, we were in our <laughs> private yep. place with us. Uh, that was a tough one right there. So let's get into it. They got 12 features. So what are the ones that sent out to you, Zach? Uh, let's start with Five Seasons of Revolution, which is about Already an aspiring... Already taken one of mine. Uh, it's about an aspiring video journalist uh, in born in Syria who starts to report on the events around her and then finds herself... Uh, talking about her own destiny, it just a very intriguing premise for a story. And I feel like that, that idea of report, getting in the middle of a story you're reporting and then being the subject of it is something that we've seen many, many times, but uh, can always be in a really fantastic setup for just tension and drama. And especially with the backdrop of Syria and uh, a young aspiring video journalist, I just, I'm very eager to check this one out. Uh, but uh, you said it's on your list as well. Dude, she said that this is her debut feature because she's uh, been making it undercover for 10 years. Forget the synopsis. That's the pitch right there. <laughs> also, um, it's produced by someone. Uh, really quick on the director. The director's name is Lena. That's it? That's it. Working with producer, I don't know if you... Laura Port... 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 You, you, you seen this woman? She's made a couple of little documentaries such as, oh, I don't know, one that really deals with hiding in Citizen Four. <laughs> <laughs> Another one from this year which has been taking uh, the documentary field by storm as well. In All, All the Beauty, the beauty and the Bloodshed. And the bloodshed. Yeah. One of the biggest releases for the New York Film Festival. This is pretty much a lock to make it all the way to the Oscars. If she's producing a movie at Sundance where a woman went undercover for a decade... Won't yeah, reveal we her a, full name. <laughs> I think we have a hit on our hands. Five yeah. Seasons of Revolution is in my top three as well. For sure, uh, it is. It is incredible. It, it just looks fantastic. Um, I'm 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 thrilled to catch this one. So I agree. Uh, with you. Yeah, another one on my list is Fantastic Machine. You're just going down my list. Oh man, it is, we should probably host a podcast together. <laughs> Talk um, about it. Yeah. So this one is 
looking at uh, from a sociological perspective the proliferation of cameras in our world the plot description says from the first camera to 45 billion cameras worldwide today fil the filmmakers widen their lens to expose humanity's unique obsession with the camera's image and the social consequ consequences that lay ahead and that is sounds like an extremely ambitious idea to try and tackle in a documentary format but it's the exact kind of like heady out there idea that I am very eager to see. You know, sometimes you get films that don't really live up to that that grand uh, exploration uh, or that that wide scope that they try to do. And then sometimes you find these really unique pieces of film. And I'm thinking back to like when we caught uh, All Light Everywhere from Theo Anthony. And it just like glimpses, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's the kind of stuff that you're hoping to see, uh, you know, it sneak its way into these categories. So Fantastic Machine, it's definitely on my, my list. Zach, what do you think about this guy producing? Oh no, did they take him out? There he is. <laughs> I mean, that's all you need, isn't it? It's it, you need, I'm laughing already. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Ruben Ostlin. Ruben Ostlin, he has a little movie out right now called Triangle of Sadness. He has a little movie out that came out uh, a couple years ago. It's one of my favorite of all time, Force Majeure. To have him <laughs> as producer right here is another reason why you can have a very nice cosign. Because it leads me to believe that it's going to have a nice little edge to it. Right? Yeah. So I I'm very excited for Fantastic Machine. Should I guess your number one, Zach? Because I feel we can go down it. Let's see if we went three for three. Uh, I feel like here we're gonna diverge, but but let's let's try it out. I'm going with Smoke Sauna Sisterhood. Zach, I'm not, uh, but no, that's a pretty good one. To talk about yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this one seems a little bit mysterious, but I'm I'm intrigued by that mystery. Uh, it, the plot description reads that in the darkness of a smoke sauna, women share their innermost secrets and intimate experiences, washing off the shame trapped in their bodies and regaining the strength through a sense of communion. And and I don't know if that. I'm hoping this is going to be like m not so much devastating, but more profound. Uh, just something about the idea of these senses of community and the like cleansing of both body and spirit. If they can evoke that in a documentary, I feel like that would be a really powerful piece. Makes sense. Uh, one thing I noted for Anna Hintz was she calls herself an active dumpster diver. She even made a little <laughs> short about it. So uh, she sounds like she's going to have a, a very interesting perspective in, in yeah. uh, documenting it. So that's a good one. Smoke Sauna Sisterhood. Wrapping up your top three. Uh, just to mention a couple of other ones. I did mess up earlier. I had mentioned one about NASA people leaving. It's actually this one. The Longest oh, okay, Goodbye okay. is being pitched as like doc therapy pretty much. So I find that kind of interesting. There's one called Piano Forte about young pianists who are like all competing. But it comes from a director who we just saw. The director of Primetime from last year's Sundance, or two years ago, if I'm not mm. mistaken, at this point. Interesting. Um, he's coming in to do a documentary that has three sound people. So this is definitely one where you're going to want to have good speakers on it uh, as it follows this competition. Uh, one of the other ones that I had on my horizon is, is there anybody out there? Because it reminds me a lot of last year's. You had just mentioned it earlier when you had said, um, I didn't see you there. And mm. I know that that was a movie that definitely tested viewers' patience. This <laughs> seems like... It's what we expected that one to be and where she's opening up the it's not as experimental. She's opening up the conversation because of uh, her abilities and, and dealing with a lot of people who have given her discrimination because of the way that her body is set. So this is one that I definitely have on my horizon. She is the writer director for it as well. But then we get to some of the some of the top ones here and they're just insane. We were just talking about the one that has a director with only one name because they've been in hiding. Mm -hmm. This guy right here for 20 days in Maripol made a previous documentary just off of the found footage of Ukraine Ukrainian soldiers. Mm. He does all the coverage for AP over there. He is the president of the Ukrainian Association of Professional Photographers. Huh. <laughs> Seems like he's done a lot of stuff. And yeah. in all that, to think that this is the movie where now everyone's attention is over there? I don't know, man. It seems like this. This reminds me of one uh, like president, which we mentioned a couple times from Sundance, right. where it's so visceral in putting you uh, just right there in in the midst of it. I I'm mixing these up over here. Iron Butterflies is the one where it's made up of the of oh, okay. the different yeah. stuff. This one jumped out to me as well. I mean, there's uh, like last year there were also two so many Ukrainian films, yeah. but, but specifically Ukrainian films, and, and it seems like Sundance is doing the same thing this year and uh, putting yeah, a couple cool. different Ukrainian films in uh, in the festival. 
So both of them, Iron Butterflies and 20 Days and Maropol. But you had mentioned five, revol- uh, five Seasons of Revolution. Yeah. Fantastic Machine. You were only missing one. My top one easily is the eternal memory. Okay. What I say about this category, it's the only category to make me what? <laughs> cry, and this one is not on my list because I'm sure it will make me cry. <laughs> Agosto and Paulina have been together for 25 years. Eight years ago, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Both fear the day he no longer recognizes her. I thought it was enough that this is coming from the director who did freaking mole agents. Think that oh, made man. it far enough. I think that was another one that came from Chile that had I love people that one. crying. How about the fact that it's, again, the producer, Pablo Lorraine, coming in to helm mm-hmm. this one. So it's getting his cosign. I'm sure a lot of you are fascinated by the films of this man. This is going to hit on all cil- <laughs> cylinders. Uh, I know this is going to leave me as a wreck. It's only 84 minutes, and I think that's because they're being nice to you. Any longer than that, and you probably would be devastated. I feel yeah. she's going to knock it out of the park even more than she did with the last one. We are not ready for this one. The Eternal Memory at the top yeah. of my world cinema docs. It's only 84 minutes so that you can schedule yourself an hour to collect yourself after the movie. For the next one, yeah. So uh, this is like one of those where obviously we want to see everything like in person. Now I need to see this one alone. <laughs> All I need is the memory of, of whoever was yeah. in the living room with me. I don't need anybody else. There's, there's some that are okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are all of the world doc ones that we had there. So that's pretty much all of the main competition slates uh, yeah. that you see at Sundance. Uh, I think that was a pretty good rundown of a lot of the ones to look forward to. Uh, we always like covering the behind the scenes because that's where you, you don't realize until later. Oh, there was something that was of note mm-hmm. there in that movie. It, it didn't just come out of nowhere. So uh, yeah, I'm curious about the surprises. Especially in highlighting the producers, you know, it's it's the producers who are lending their name to filmmakers who don't yet have that name. And it's the debuts at festivals like Sundance that will make you one day know these people. So, yeah, if you don't know where to look in terms of recognizable talent, look towards the producers of a film. Easily. Uh, we're going to do qu- some quick, easy, breezy, light ones here. New Frontier, yeah. the kids, before we get into the very dark ones and then wrap it up with the, the premieres. But uh, as I've uh, explained before, if you're there in person, they kind of take out this whole room uh, in one of the theaters. I guess they're not even up yet. But they take up this whole room for this category called The New Frontier. And I hope they bring it back the way... Oh, there it is. Here we go. A Common Sequence, Gush, and Last Things are the three that they have on here. They're all narrative VR stories, which I do believe is where we're headed to. I've heard Jimmy Cameron even talk about it for Avatar. But mm-hmm. the idea is, is that if you're at home and you have like the Oculus, you can participate in these, which I think was a really cool thing from the Virtual Fest last year. They even sent some of those out to some press people. Yeah, uh, not I'm us. Still looking in the, I'm still looking in the mail for mine. Yeah. The other thing that they have with this is that the new frontier at the festival, if you're able to go to it, nah, they did more than just put an Oculus on you. Alina did this one where you put your hand in, they had like something on the screen and it, you thought you were touching sand. You thought you were (laughs) hovering over fire. Like what that did was take the next Wally step, which is like, forget the VR and you feeling like you're there. What if you felt it in your fingers and everything else? So they, they test out a lot of really cool stuff at the new frontier offices or whatever you call it there so i'm hoping mm-hmm. that there's more than these three but we'll have to wait and see just putting the new frontier on your horizon something to not let go of because even tribeca just changed and dropped the film part of their <laughs> festival because right. they have a lot more gaming if you want to call it that stories on the horizon so new frontier is a cool thing to check out while you're there uh one of the other ones i had mentioned was the kids section they always have yeah. like two or three really interesting ones but i love the title of this one Aliens abducted my parents and now I feel kind of left out. It's a really <laughs> cool title uh, yeah. for a movie. It is a sci-fi film about you know, a kid being, you know, left alone after everyone was abducted. Uh, these tend to just be kind of cute. But Will Forte's in this and the lead is Emma Tremblay. <laughs> <laughs> you could guess it. Sister I mean, they even, she, I the can even all- see it in her face. <laughs> You see it there, bro. It's just put a wig on the boy Jacob and you got the sister right there. But uh, this is probably the one out of the list that stood out the most to me. Aliens abducted my parents and now I feel kind of left out. Uh, followed by the adventure animation, The Amazing Maurice, a movie that's going to be coming uh, from two co-directors, Toby Genko and Florian Westerman. Uh, I think this is based off of a book, so this should be pretty cute. Hugh Laurie, Emilia Clark as voices. So I'm sure this one will be one that gets a pretty decent yeah. release. Then there's this one... That's only in person. This is the, the place where I kind of wanted to, to showcase this to you. Um, 
as I pulled up all the other ones, you can kind of see that while you're looking at these landing pages for the movies, you will see right under the synopsis available in person and online. Right. Everything we've covered so far is available online. Sometimes you guys watch this and you think, I'm not going. You have the ability to watch it online. Mm -hmm. Blueback is not available. This is a movie that's so serious. You need to see it in person. So we have hit our first. Uh, Who is this? Eric Bana? (laughs) His movie's (laughs) too big, bro. You need to see it over there about a mother-daughter relationship uh, trying to take care of the coast. I think it's based off of a book. This reminds me of that, like, what was the one with, uh, like, Blue Miracle? The one with uh, Morgan Freeman when they saved a dolphin? A dolphin still. I don't know why they're taking it so serious, but it comes from the guy who did The Dry. Um, Not doing The Dry because this is a PG movie. So (laughs) if that movie interested you and you were wondering, hey, what does a kid's film feel like from him? (laughs) (laughs) Then there you go. But I'm sticking yeah. with my pick. If for whatever reason you're bringing your kids to uh, Sundance, aliens abducted my parents, and now I feel kind of left out. That's my go-to pick for the kiddos. Cool. But that's the kids section right there. Um, always keeping it light and breezy in case you wanted something different coming out of that. They also have the collection, uh, which is just movies from the past that have come out, if you were curious in that. But let's lead it into the next two interesting categories of the next and midnight probably the biggest categories that get the most polarized reviews if you're doing mm-hmm. like horror movies or the next category which is literally titled next because they wanted to see what is the next thing in innovation some may argue it's because these are the movies where five minutes and you're yelling next so let's start <laughs> off with those next likes to do a lot of different things and uh they released some fascinating movies in the past mm-hmm. yeah uh i think the Best one, at least from our perspective in the last couple of years, is probably Searching, uh, which came out a couple of years ago. Uh, sure. But uh, but last year, it was also the category that hosted Something in the Dirt, one of our favorite films uh, from last year's Sundance. It sure. also uh, had The Cathedral, which I'm seeing on a lot of uh, best of lists, Miha, which I know you liked quite a bit. It's on Disney. Uh, and a love story, which I believe was nominated for the AARP's Best Grown Up Love Story Award. <laughs> Good for them. I'm glad they made it. Uh, so, with this year's next category, there are a couple movies that jumped out to me. The first one, I don't know if this is on your list, but it was Kim's video. Partially. My number be- one. Okay, cool. Uh, Kim's Video is kind of an iconic New York City video store. It it predates my... Really? It predates my going to video stores, but, like, I know film critics who I like who, like, worked there or went there and stuff. So uh, it just from the perspective of people who love physical media and, and love film, uh, that already intrigues me. But they're saying that this is a documentary that plays with form and tropes of various genres in its investigation Uh to find the legendary collection of titles from Kim's video. That sounds like it could go horribly wrong (laughs) or horribly right, but I'm there for it either way. Same. I, I'm so intrigued with this is playing the opening night and they talked about like the 50,000 videos that went missing and stuff. (laughs) I'm I'm excited for this movie. It's my number one out of the next category. Uh, I'm also intrigued by the tuba thieves. That's my number two. (laughs) Uh, So this one talks about uh, tubas that were stolen from a Los Angeles (laughs) high school, but the plot description says this is not a story about thieves or missing tubas. (laughs) Cool. I don't know what it is, but but cool. down. Bring it on. Yeah, I'm here. Again, and I have nothing else to go off these next movies. No producers, nothing, but the Mm -hmm. way that they're pitching themselves. So yeah, it's an experimental doc. I have that on my top three as well. And then uh, the one maybe more traditional narrative, although it's in next, so who knows how traditional it'll be. I got to live and die and live about Muhammad, who returns home to Detroit to bury his stepfather and is thrust into settling his accounts, but struggling with depression and addiction, uh, which might finish him before he finishes the task. Yeah, it just sounds like an intriguing setup for a movie, and uh, that it that it is in the next category also makes it uh, that much more intriguing yeah, and, and this more is mysterious. One, uh, it's it's got a couple of people. Omari Hardwick, who some of you may know from uh, if you watch him on TV, but uh, Sorry to Bother You was a great one they had from Sundance. Uh, and then who, someone else was also going to be in this one, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it's uh, someone from 
on my block. So you'll have a couple wow. of people in here. So we'll see how this one goes. Uh, some other ones to put on the radar was there's this one called Kokomo City. I'm not mm-hmm. exactly sure like what the perspective of this is going to be, but the director to this uh, was recently on. They, they were a singer. They were on Lil Wayne's "Shoot Me Down" music hmm. video, um, or, or just song in general. They're credited on there. So this is a, a look at like sex workers and the way that it's shot. Seems like it's going to be really interesting. So Kokomo City is one that kind of stood out. There is a horror. Sorry, there is a one called Divinity. Let me get this ready here. <clears throat> an action adventure comedy horror sci fi thriller written by Eddie Alcazar, directed by Eddie Alcazar, and executive produced by Steven Soderbergh. He is a person who believes that nothing should be unconfined by genre, produced Kuso, which was the movie that I went to go buy tickets for, and they told me, uh, no, we're just going to return him for you already <laughs> when I was at Sundance, uh, and, and pegged this thing called Metascope, a visionary technique of blending live action and stop motion together. Hmm. Starring Bella Thorne. I don't know if this is <laughs> going to be a mess or if it's going to be great, but there's something to say when your movie is being premiered early on at the Egyptian. So yeah. I don't know. There's something about this one that kind of has me intrigued. The Divinity. Horror, sci-fi, action, thriller. I don't know. But Steven Soderbergh is co-signing it. So I'm kind of curious to see what it's going to be about. Um, Young, Wild, and Free was the one that's got the one from on my block. All of these movies. I get so close. I'm in the right in the category of it. But this is the one that I was telling you. Uh, this is a director, Denby Banks, who has done uh, a couple of episodes of HBO's Insecure. This one has Sierra Capri, Mike Apps. And this is the story of a teenager struggling to provide for his younger siblings only when he finds somebody who is the girl of his dreams, maybe doing something back at him that they were planning. So I'm curious to see what, how this one plays off. The director also worked on a lot of Only Murders in the Building. So hmm. I think that they're going to bring in a, a nice tone to it, especially if the movie's called Young, Wild, and Free. Right. Um, besides Kim's video, which you said, I agree in my top. Tuba Thieves in my top. The one that wraps it out for me is this comedy drama called Fremont. Uh, Donya works for a Chinese fortune cookie company in San Francisco. Formerly a translator for the U.S. military in Afghanistan, she struggles to put her life back in order. In a moment of sudden revelation, she decides to send out a special message in the <laughs> cookie. Um, that's all I needed to know. The guy is also editing his own movie. I don't know. That always intrigues me. And there's a rumor mm-hmm. out there. It keeps popping up in the IMDb. The boy Jeremy Allen White is in this movie. So Ooh. that's enough to put it on my horizon Ooh. as a comedy drama out of the next category. So Very we'll see. Cool. It's going to be really intriguing to see what they bring with it. And um, all of our picks, everything that is in the next category is available online as that's well. Part of it. Unfortunately, our next category, only one film is available Why? online. It makes no sense, but I guess scary movies are the best to watch with an audience, yeah. even though you end up actually going to go see it at midnight for the midnight <laughs> and the Uber ends up being $70. But, Zach, how many classics have come out of this Oof. one? Ooh, I mean, th- going back to the days when you went to Sundance before me, I think that's where you saw Hereditary. Uh, I showed up at Sundance. I think this is where we saw Greener Grass. This is a category yeah, that is a good category that is ripe. And last year, it also gave us Fresh, Hatching, Piggy, Speak No Evil. Uh, it, it's it's always pretty stacked in the midnight category. Uh, And I think there's some pretty intriguing ones this year as well. I'm going to start out with the film that I'm maybe anticipating the most, although it's also a little bit of a Sundance wording because I'm not planning to catch Infinity Pool at Sundance. How did that happen? Talk about it. So, so this is the new film written and directed by Brandon Cronenberg, son of David Cronenberg, director of films like Possessor, which was another very intriguing and, and dark and twisted Sundance selection. Uh, his latest Wait. film, which is coming from Neon, is already has a trailer out, uh, and it stars a couple favorites of the pod in uh, Alexander Skarsgård and Mia Goth. I, I'm definitely very curious to watch this film, but it'll be out in theaters January 27th, I think is the Unreal. date. Unreal. So before, before the festival the is festival, over. It will be right there. It even says Topic Studios. Topic is a streaming service. It could be going over there or Hulu because it's neon. But those are the biggest tips and tricks that we always like to pitch people. Um, also, I don't know if you saw. It's also online for press. 
Right. So you don't even need to be in person. Pretty much everything ended up being online for press. This is the category where we're starting to split between uh, everything of the categories that you saw prior to this, except for Midnight and the premieres. Those are the only in person. Everything else, the entire public has virtual access to. Mm-hmm. Honestly, we always say, I always tell you that if the movie is going to come out before April, skip it. Watch the stuff that's not going to come out until late, you know, Oscar season or you you don't even know, may not even come out for a while. S- stuff that this, hasn't been bought yet. This, uh, The fact that it is in the midnight category does make it jump out a little bit. This is about an aspiring martial artist who believes she must save her older sister from uh, her impending marriage. And it's like it's a movie about a, we- a wedding heist. So I, I don't know. That sounds like a fun time. And sometimes at Sundance, you need those jolts of excitement to interrupt your Alzheimer's dramas. <laughs> I've checked the schedule. I've looked through it. This has an opening at the Eccles, even though we can see it at the press, even though we can see it online. I am that'll making be a time. fun Eccles I'm screening. making time to drop tickets for this movie. There are yeah. moments where you realize, do you want to be there at the world premiere of maybe a new classic? <laughs> when we, we realized like we were at South by for everything, everywhere, all at once. I was like, that's technically the first time it was shown. Yeah. This may be the next big Sundance hit. Uh, maybe I'm writing it too high, but I have it in my top three. And there's something about this movie. Don't. And as I scroll down, Zach, it's already picked up by Focus Features. Endorsement. That should tell, that should tell you what you need yeah. to know. Uh, I'm excited for this one, too. Like I said, it's in my top three. So <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to drop the money for it. I'm, I'm going to pay tickets to make sure I secure that for the opening day. So cool. uh, I agree with you. All right, so my last pick from the midnight category then is Talk to Me. We almost it's had about, a three for three. Oof, oof. Uh, this one is about a group of friends who discover how to conjure spirits using an ancient embalmed hand and then became hooked on the new thrill. Uh, that that sounds intriguing enough on its own. I think that image is also just very mysterious and, and kind of ominous, too. You know, you want to find at least one movie that's going to kind of rock you to your foundation and disturb you when you go to the midnight movies. And my, my goal, my hope, at least my, my fingers are crossed that it will be talk to me. There's something about, there's something about talk to me that blew me away. I don't know these guys that much, or I thought I didn't. Danny Philippou turns out like yeah. they were cam ops on like the Babadook. Like, Oh cool. You guys were in the business to do that. That, that, that's really awesome. There's another movie in this festival called Onyx, the uh, Fortuitous and the Talisman of the Soul. Is this comedy horror? Uh, that's the you know. one that's on uh, online from Midnight, for what it's worth. What you mean? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Well, let me tell you why. I love to talk here because the point that I was trying to make is that this is a movie that's coming from a guy named Andrew Bowser. I don't know the man like that. He makes a lot of online stuff, a lot of YouTube videos, dude. Mm-hmm. So this is a movie coming from a YouTuber. There's something about me that you know may not be my full cup of tea, but I will be there supporting this man. And I love that this is being released. As Zach said, only one from this category online. There's something about a YouTuber knowing the difference there because it, it kind of relies on the company. And since this is such an independent movie from a YouTuber, they're like, yeah, do it online. That's where my stuff is. I didn't think we had two YouTubers on this list, Zach. But this next one, in a million years, I would have never guessed. The guys from Talk To Me are the ones who made these insane, ridiculous, Ronald McDonald abuse videos. (laughs) Either this hits or it doesn't. Do you know of these videos, Zach? I've never seen them. Someone out there, when you're watching this, is not going to believe that these are the guys who just got a Sundance movie. Zach, your homework is to watch these videos after the oh, fact. Oh, man. These are, Zach, these are massive videos. <laughs> Zach, these aren't a joke. I mean, You're got... looking at it right there. This is not a yeah. joke. I go back, and what did the thing say? It said, they're from Raka Raka. I just always <laughs> knew them as the crazy uh, McDonald's videos. At, a, at 80 mil, Zach, this is what these guys are known for. And they're mm-hmm. looking to rebrand with a Sundance movie. Mm-hmm. I might have to be there day one. <laughs> I can't believe they gave them this. These guys are insane. This is that movie. Yeah. This is going to be that movie. I think so. Uh, Talk to me, Infinity Pool, Polite Society, all movies that I have in my top five. Rounding out my other two would have been this one called My Animal. 
Heather, an outcast. Uh, I think she's a goalie for the small town. It looks like it's going to be shot very beautifully, but it's who it comes from as well. Uh, they've worked with John Carpenter and Jim Jarmusch, Jacqueline. I think if you're working under people that talented, you're bound to give us something now that <laughs> right. you're in the midnight category. So my animal is one that I have on my horizon, but birth rebirth, really cool title, really good imagery. And it's the story of a morgue technician successfully reanimating the body of a little girl, but mm. to keep her breathing, she will need to harvest the biological materials from a pregnant woman. But when the girl's mother, a nurse discovers her baby alive, they enter a deal that forces them down a dark path of no return. This sounds like it's going to be awesome if they allowed them, allow them to go all out. This is a horror movie that could definitely push the envelope. So uh, they've also made movies like uh, Porn Without Sex, and that's like their <laughs> big push uh, on their Sundance bios. So we'll see. But a lot of really good ones coming out of the Midnight category, including In My Mother's Skin, which has a really cool poster. I'm, I'm hoping it's able to l- deliver on that sense as well. But really good ones from the Midnight category. Sadly, a lot of them are going to be in person, but some are going to be in person a week before it comes out. So not yeah. too shabby from there. Finally, we have the biggest category to many because it's the movies that have been vetted. They have been uh, scoped out. It is the premieres. Mm -hmm. Recently, they've done a good job at dividing the premieres between the documentaries and the narratives. They kind of just flushed them all in there, but (laughs) I've kind of divided them. So I have all of these, which is the biggest category because I said it's two in one, even has a second page there. I've divided them into all of the narratives and into all of the docs. Uh, And I figured we start with the docs. Um, Okay. Judy Bloom forever. Or I, I don't know if you had some picks from out of here, because these are some oh, ones just, that ended up making it to the Oscars. Yeah, well, so last year, uh, this is where we got the Kanye documentary, Genius, mm-hmm. which, you know, would need a whole other chapter if it was premiering this year. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, we had uh, La Guerra Civil, which you mentioned earlier in our broadcast here. Uh, Lucy and Desi, the Amy Poehler directed uh, look at Lucy... Uh, uh, I love Lucy. Uh, a lot of interesting films. The Princess, which is on uh, HBO, and we like thought. We need to talk about Cosby from W. Kamau Bell. So a lot of interesting films premiere in uh, the documentary would, premieres Would You Be section. My Neighbor may have been one, too. Don't quote me mm. on that, but I remember that came from Sundance. Um, I actually didn't highlight any of the um, docs because I was so distracted by the narratives. The but premieres? what do you have here? Yeah. I got you. Yeah, let's let's run them through. Uh, I'll go through the list really quick. Uh, there's a lot of like C stuff that's going to be out there uh, as they do every year. I'm curious to see how they're able to build that up. A lot of stuff dealing with like the production of food and how we approach that. So uh, uh, the premieres has a lot of uh, very... I don't want to just call it message centric, but more message centric than story centric, as we saw in the U.S. and the world dramatic uh, and how they focus on stuff. Uh, But some of the ones that really stood out to me would be Plant C, which is a documentary uh, here from the States. Hasn't been picked up yet, but it comes from a director who won in 2014 for the Sundance Jury for Rich Hill. Uh, obviously this is playing with, if you don't have plan A, you don't got plan B, (laughs) what's plan C, right? Yeah. Uh, invisible beauty is also going to be coming out of here. This is from the U S and it comes from the people who have worked on Dior and I Halston, even the producer who's working on the little Richard doc is working on this one over here. Uh, and it's about a fashion revolutionary and everything that they did in order to be able to make it to the top. But I think the biggest ones easily, uh, these are two movies that I, I believe are already picked up. Still, a Michael J. Fox yeah. movie is already picked up by Apple TV+. Plus. They had really good run with their pick from Sundance last year, making it all the way to the best picture. Uh, and picking up some documentaries could also be a, a really big deal for them. Uh, I know that this one's only going to be in person, and it's coming from the guy who did An Inconvenient Truth, Waiting for Superman. So it's a pretty big documentary in covering the story, um, which uh, is why I feel that it's going to have a pretty good run. Producers... Worked on Summer of Soul, Boy State, A Thousand Cuts. They have a lot of people uh, behind this one right here. So I, I think you could wait on this one because it's going to be on Apple TV. That's the other thing. Like it's, right. it's It has a secured release date yeah. on a platform. So yeah, it's 90 minutes. Take it as you will. We're, we're going to try to catch it because I'm sure it's going to be a big one out of the festival. But um, that's in the top two. And to me, it's got to be this little movie called Judy Bloom Forever. Yeah. Documentary that's also 
being done in like half animation. Uh, I don't know if you saw, they're sending out emails right now. They're really trying to push this one. So we yeah. may be able to get uh, an early look on this one, but it, it's about Judy Bloom, the author. Now I'm just really yeah. curious to see how they're going to be breaking this one down. So uh, that would be at the top of my list. Do kids still read Judy Bloom? I feel like, you know, our age, it was. It's it's definitely our age popular. more than anything, but I think yeah. uh, I think we're about to get this resurgence in like movies where everyone's going to be mentioning Judy Bloom, so right. the kids are just going to know he has Judy Bloom. Um, <laughs> moving into the premieres, uh, yeah. Give me your top three. Well, from last year, this was the category that brought us Emily the Criminal dominating Netflix right now. Good luck to you, Leo Grand, one of the best performances of the year. Honk for Ooh. Jesus, Save Your Soul, a couple of the best performances of the year. And Re Resurrection, All Hail, Rebecca Shut Hall. Uh, so many good picks from last year's premieres. But this year, it's also jam-packed. Um, I'm going to start with one of the last ones mentioned, and that's You Hurt My Feelings, which stars Julia Louis-Dreyfus, whom I love, whom is excellent girl. when she does get the chance to have kind of a big screen role. Uh, she sees her reuniting with Nicole Holof Center, Yo. with whom they made the film Enough Said, which is like an absolutely delightful movie. And Nicole Holof Center is also uh, the person who wrote the screenplay for Can You Ever Forgive Me? And collaborated on the screenplay for The Last Duel. I, I like her a lot as a filmmaker. A24 has this film. Uh, and it's, it's about a novelist who, whose long-standing marriage starts to fall apart when she overhears her husband's honest reaction to her new book. It kind <laughs> of has that like force majeure, awkward quality to the, the true plot American description. version of it, yeah. Yeah, uh, so even though she already starred in one force majeure remake, I feel like this is maybe a, a gonna be a better attempt at that kind of idea. I hope, bro. I, I'm with it just because of Nicole. Uh, yeah. Seeing her come in with it and the fact that it's already got the pickup. Yeah, I had that right outside in my uh, <laughs> I list. trust Nicole Halvesetter a little more than Jim Rash and Nat Faxon. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> um, I got one that I'm almost 100% sure you don't have on your list, and that's Rotting in the Sun. Because uh, I'm a little bit higher on our on the boy, Sebastian Silva, Zach, than you are. can you guess where it's on my list? At the bottom. Bottom of the <laughs> list. Rotting in the sun. We're looking through the AMC Plus thing and, that, and Alina goes, what's that movie right there with Michael Sarah and the pickle? <laughs> I said, it's a cactus. And we're not watching a that. magical cactus. Oh, tell him. So Rotting in the Sun uh, is from Sebastian Silva, who's been to Sundance before. He's done films like... Uh, Crystal Fairy and the Magical Cactus, as we were talking oh. about. Tyrell, which I know you really don't like. Uh, the Maid, which is an excellent, excellent movie. All right, I'll and check that one out. That's the one that I feel like is potentially the most relevant to this one because the plot description says, after filmmaker Sebastian Silva goes missing in Mexico City, <laughs> social media celebrity Jordan Firstman begins searching for him, suspecting that the cleaning lady in Sebastian's build -a building might have something to do with his disappearance. And just that after all these years, he's returning to stories about cleaning ladies uh, makes me wonder what kind of weird menace this whole thing is going to get into. I like Sebastian Silva. He also has that movie Nasty Baby that I loved. I don't know if you ever caught Nasty, that one. Nasty Baby's better. That's yeah. like that's him doing it at, at the best. The other two are. <laughs> I feel like, like you're like 50 50. I'm, I, it's not my favorite, but. Well, like, I haven't seen The Maid, so I'm 100% no. <laughs> Once I watch <laughs> the, the Maid. The Maid's really good. Yeah, the Maid so is his best. I, I'm 60. Uh, I'm at that 60. Uh, yeah, uh, two thirds 60 40. Negative, yeah. Yeah. But. If you're saying it, dude, uh, th I hate how good the synopsis sounds. I, I know. I hate it, how good the synopsis sounds. Look, I'll watch it first, and then you can watch it later. Okay, I'll, I'll sure. tell you whether or not it's a, an amount of Sebastian Silva you can handle. <laughs> this is the one where it's like, do I even have the 90 minutes to fit this in? <laughs> um, yeah, dude, I was looking at it. The Maid did win the Sundance Jury Award. So if this ends up being like a, I don't know, pseudo kind of sequel, that would be interesting. Yeah. My biggest thing is, why is this man developing two TV series with Ari Aster and A24. <laughs> I, Ari recognizes how, how good he is at making people uncomfortable. Rotting in the sun will be coming soon. <laughs> I, I prefer something in the dirt as of right now, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> oh, those are your uh, top? Those are my top two, and I got one more, which uh, features a former 
guest of the Intercut program. It's my number one. Talk about it. Let's talk about Landscape with Invisible Hand, uh, a film about when Earth is taken over by aliens who control the economy and a pair of teenagers who come up with a plan to save their family. This is the latest from Corey Finley, who not only debuted Thoroughbreds at the 2017 Sundance Film Festival, uh, but brought Bad Education uh, and and that was one of our favorite films of 2020 uh, that Easily. debuted on HBO with Hugh Jackman. So Corey, in my book, is two for two. I'm very intrigued to see what he's got here. Uh, he's back. Uh, he's doing the screenplay on this one, unlike Bad Education. And it's got an interesting cast on it as well with uh, Josh Hamilton, Michael Gandolfini, William Jackson Harper, one of my favorites. I feel like. Uh, Asante Black and Kylie Rogers are really the stars of this thing as the the teenagers and the people who are featured in the two images that you see on the Sundance yep. website. But there's also just something a little bit like off, I feel like, about those images that, that intrigues me. And Thoroughbreds was a film that did a really good job of leaving you like very unsettled with normal conversations. So... I, I'd trust Corey to make a really good one with this. It sounds very intriguing. I'm using intriguing too much. <laughs> Thoroughbreds is what well, was one of the first that I saw. I remember he was one of the first Q and A's. Yeah. We've had our own Q and A's with him. This yeah. also, I think, is from a novel. Uh, so I don't know how much behind the scenes has gone there, but it's the guy who's worked on Royalty Free, the music of Kevin McLeod. <laughs> a, a random dog that you sent to me about all of the Royalty Free music we use. A Lucky hidden spinning gem. monkeys. So for this to be coming from him, and then there's, we were just talking about movies being from Focus Features, A24, being bought. The contact is Jeffrey Penman at iCloud.com. There's something raw about this movie. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like he's just going to knock it out of the park. Like he didn't tell anyone that he's making a whole other feature film and he's just going to let it ride. No one can tell him what to fix. There's no producer. There's no company if he's just out there making it on his own. Yep. With, with some guy in an iCloud account. 94 minutes. It is at the top of my list. I think it's in my top three of the festival. Oof. Uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely excited for that one, too. Landscape with Invisible Hand, easily. Um, All right, I saved a couple here because I knew you'd pick at least one of the ones that I'm interested in. For sure, in. yeah. Uh, let, let me run through a couple of the ones that are here and, and then lead it up to my top ones just so we have everything covered from this. But uh, we have Radical, which is coming out. It is the big premiere film, which is crazy. It's based off of an article uh, that was written, uh, I guess, about a, a true story that was happening uh, around the Mexican border. Um, and it stars someone who I thought was like completely injured, but I, I don't know, he, he, he got fixed. Uh, Eugenio, I don't know if you heard, did like yeah. a whole VR stunt, like messed up. I don't know. He worked Maybe with Apple. Maybe this was filmed before. I think it's then? Apple trying to get uh, against <laughs> Oculus. <laughs> but I guess it must have been filmed before. It's a big yeah. premiere. Like or they I just use some avatar technology. Some avatar tech. He's <laughs> he's going to be uh, the opening night film. Um, we'll see. It's a drama. We'll see how it yeah. plays. It could be hokey, but nonetheless, it's going to be there. A movie that looked good too. That I thought was going to be kind of interesting because I love this actor right here. Franz yeah. is one of my favorite actors. He's been in so many freaking good movies. But you saw Frankie, and you didn't like the movie from the <laughs> Sex before. <laughs> now look. So, look. Yeah, I was going to talk about this because I got this on my list too. It's not just Franz. It's Ben Wisha and Adele Exarchopoulos. Yes, and that that image is also very intriguing there. Um, the, but you've the, been burnt in the past. I have and, been and, burnt. Yeah. I, Iris Axe is a filmmaker who I feel like has sometimes is a little bit more slow than I would like in his movies. But I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm willing to give <laughs> well, it a well, shot. As a streaming one. <laughs> So I have that one on there, Passages, uh, Drama Romance. Um, a Little Prayer is another one that's also going to be coming out. Uh, and this one, I don't know if you heard, comes from producer Ramin Barani. I don't know if you know <laughs> this, but he's in Roger Ebert's top list. So A yep. Little Prayer will be coming out. Um, Drift is a drama also on the horizon from Anthony Chen. He did Ilo Ilo and Wet Season, two movies that I haven't caught yet, but have been on my horizon. I don't know if you have. Um he did do, or the writer of this did a Sundance little short called Dirty God a couple years ago, or that might have been a feature, but this comes from, uh, it's a co-production from two different companies, so we'll see how this one does. Cassandro looks really interesting. It could be a really good lead performance, 
or it might just end up being okay. Uh, the director of this has worked on previous docs, like The Apollo. I don't know if you've seen that one about the uh, in New York and all the shows that they were able yeah. to uh, have there. But Gael Garcia Bernal is the lead here, mm -hmm. playing Saul, uh, what is it, Armin Daris, a gay amateur wrestler from El Paso, rising to itch international stardom after he creates the exotico character Cassandro. So I'm curious to see how far he goes with this. It's only 99 minutes. If this was like an hour 20, I'd be like, oh, they're going all out for him on his performance. This leads me somewhere in the middle and we'll see how it plays out. But I'm excited uh, for him being the lead which is why I have it a little bit higher. The action drama romance thriller, though, Cat Person, seems so <laughs> intriguing, and this was one yes. of the first things that Zach put on uh, on the group chat. So, Zach, talk about this one. Yeah, well, so this was is based on a story from uh, The New Yorker that went extremely viral, uh, and it's about a romance between an older man and a younger woman, Robert, who's 34, Margot, who's 20, uh, and just... I think one of the ways to sort of contextualize the perspective of the story is that Kristen Rupenian, who is the person who wrote it, is the person credited with the story in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. So And I, book smart. Yeah. And so I think you're getting it. This is a film. Uh, this is a short story that resonated with a young online audience and to try and sort of convert that into a film that also stars Nicholas Braun, who's one of our favorites from Succession. I'm just, I'm very there for it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. You have cheat codes. Emilia Jones is a Sundance cheat code. Yeah. Because it's even more than a festival. Anything she's in, she is a cheat code. I also like Geraldine. I think she's really good uh, in these more, if they keep it more of an independent movie, uh, I think she she's going to be able to deliver there. And as a drama thriller, I'm on it. I think it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. 120 minutes, though. That's the, the part that surprises me. I don't get that. Like, it's, that's, that's a really long movie, though. It is. I, I have to imagine with a story that was as widely spread as this one, oh, that, they okay. have yeah, enough, that makes sense. they have enough stuff to do there. Um, I, I got to go back and uh, read that story, though, because I, I never bothered before, uh, finish it? before this. So, yeah, I, I'm... What's, intrigued for sure what's fascinating is this is in person and online a premiere yeah that is in person and online i think this is going to be a hot ticket try to grab it when you can yeah cat person um rounding up the tops over here you had mentioned you hurt my feelings but you did not mention a movie called the pod generation a sci-fi comedy drama about the not so distant future where this new tech kind of offers couples new opportunities for different things specifically i guess giving birth but not the natural way that we know <laughs> but through these pods um looks like a hit bro i don't yeah. know something about this just it looks like it's gonna be a knockout Interesting production design from those images as well. Yeah, and uh, Amelia Clark is in it. Is, um, is mm -hmm. that Chuetel or am I misremembering? Uh, I don't remember who else is in this. Let me scroll down to the credits over here. Uh, doo -doo 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 yeah, Chuetel is your yeah. form, my boy. Chuetel, Rosalie, John Mark Barr. I, I'm assuming that they play the couple. Uh, it's not picked up by anybody yet. They still got the sales on this. So I'm hoping that this is going to be one of the big acquisitions, one of the big things that we've been missing. And I feel it's because we haven't been doing in person. Uh, a lot of hype has been gone from the last couple of years because we don't have that, this movie just got purchased and then everybody wants to go see it. You forget that it's not the number on the Rotten Tomato that people go see during these festivals. Yeah. It's that number when they close a deal. And we haven't had that many closing of deals. Also, it's a really there's a big difference when it's Apple who's purchasing and you're like, oh, it's going to streaming as when A24 buy, buys it and you're like, wait, is this going to come out in yeah. the spring or is it going to come out in December? So I think that's going to be a different uh, experience, this festival, yeah. um, having that on the horizon. Especially considering the landscape only for in indie, indie films out there has been challenging. There, there have been a lot of indie films that are struggling at the box office right now. So you might still see a couple of those huge high profile purchases, but I'm not, I wonder how many of those purchases we'll see at Sundance this year. Another interesting point, I'm looking at this right here. I remember one time uh, we were talking about the next category and every single time they have this Alfred P. Sloan Award. It was given to searching. It was given to like Tesla. It's this award for the 
technologically advanced movie, right? Whatever yeah. story. And I remember talking to, let's just say, a director who let me know that this is a preconceived award. The jury in it. I'm not trying to ruin our chances for a next Sundance <laughs> thing, but I have heard reportedly, allegedly, supposedly that when something wins an award, um, it don't matter who's on the jury. It was kind of preselected. So here you go. Pod Generation's already the winner of the Alfred P. Sloan Award. Yeah. <laughs> Zach, they used to wait for the festival to start at least. <laughs> Yeah, they. I mean, they got a couple of these at every it's festival, right? Sign. They got the, uh, the what was it, the Sean Mendez Ensemble Award that we they gave talk about the to my one. policeman. <laughs> mm. I don't want to know about that one. Let's continue Yeah. with Ride Lane. We are right at the last couple of movies, and this was one that I thought looked pretty interesting. It seems like mm-hmm. it's going to be a collaboration with BBC and Searchlight. It looks like they're uh, kind of behind this one, and Searchlight tends to be a pretty big one to have on the horizon. If Searchlight is working on a movie or Sony Pictures Classics, <clears throat> I'm going to watch it. Uh, it seems like a pretty cute tale of just this young couple, these two just hanging out. That's it. That, that's pretty much all I need to know. Two yeah. 20-somethings reeling from bad breakups deal with their nightmare exes and connect over the course of an eventful day in South London. Hey, look, if they're trying to do this as like a, a South London before, before sunrise, Let's I'm do here it. for it. I'm down. Uh, Jamo Jaya, I believe is how it's pronounced. A this is the one that I was waiting drama. for you to bring up. You knew I was going to be waiting yeah. for it. Tell me. I mean, is this the acting debut or at least like the major acting debut of Around Rich there, Brian? Right? I think he's playing the lead, so that's pretty big. Not to mention, it is written and directed by Justin Chan, whose last film, Blue Bayou, I, I wasn't exactly like thrilled with, but it is inter- interesting and beautifully shot. Although his work on the series Pachinko, I think, is absolutely excellent. And he's a filmmaker that ha- has a history at this festival. Right here. You were mentioning Pachinko, which I'm catching up on right now before we record our best of the year list. Oh, I'm so but glad to hear that. this one out of Sundance, dude, from the first year that I went to Sundance incredible actually yeah. i think it came out the year prior to me going uh so that was one of the ones that i was catching up on leading into the festival uh highly recommend this one put this one on your list so for him to come back with this and it's rich brian i'm all in dude uh desmond's in this too and you got a couple of uh red hot chili peppers members in here i think uh yeah. probably just uh the lead with anthony but uh i'm anthony looking Kiedis. forward to this i think it's going to be really intriguing, and the premise is pretty much a rapper with a rising career hires a U.S. manager and label, taking over from his father, who has steered it to date. And it's kind of like that push and pull of telling your dad, like, you're not going to be it anymore, um, knowing how he didn't even know English until he came over uh, and, and learned it from rap music. That's why uh, Rich Brian ended up becoming a rapper. I'm very curious to see how much they're going to blend from his story and how much he's going to be able to play off that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited for this one. This one's in my top four, surprisingly. Nice. I still have three above it. All right. Fairyland. Let's hear them. Fairyland is going to be the one. Hmm. There's something about this movie where I don't think this is going to come out until the fall. Let me tell you why. It looks really good. So <laughs> Fairyland, <laughs> Fairyland is produced by Sofia Coppola. This is the one that yeah. she's bringing. It stars Emilia Jones, Scoot McNary, Gina Davis. It's just boy, a Scoot. stacked cast bro and it pretty much seems almost like a i don't want to call it like after because we're in the horizon of that but a daughter looking back at a memoir of her father they're calling it an experimental memoir and the idea is is that it's set against san francisco uh and because of the aid crisis it's kind of like her looking back at what her father went through it's based off of a best-selling memoir already in a memoir of my father and the person working on this has done a lot like they have worked for MTV. They were the vice president of production for Fox. It seems like she has everything at her disposal to make a really good movie here. And there's something about this that I think is going to be like the big drama of the year. Uh, so I, I, I'm banking on this one from the premieres as being the big runaway, easily the hit that everyone's going to be talking until Oscar season in Fairyland. And I think your boy Scoot's going to be an anchor in that. Yeah, I hope. I, mean, so. I hope so. I feel like he's been searching for a kind of this. role to really sink his teeth into. And, and, and man, if you're telling me it's going to be this one, I'm I'm that much and, more excited. And I'm hoping that it's going to be more than just your basic memoir. Like, oh, yeah. not just a really good drama, but a drama that's going to be doing something different. So, yeah, that, that, that really has me uh, intrigued for it. My top two. You already mentioned one, so I guess we get down to the final pick. You had mentioned The Landscape with Invisible Hand. That's easily yeah. one of my favorites of the festival. But there's a drama romance thriller about a woman's friendship with a new co-worker at a prison facility. That takes a sinister turn. 
Eileen, coming from the director William Oldroyd, who did Lady Macbeth, a movie with a pretty decent actress that played at Sundance a couple of years ago. Yep. And this one just looks like it, it it's going to be really good. Anne Hathaway, Thomas and Mackenzie. What, what is this, Carol 2.0? <laughs> it's based off of a book, and the guy who did the book just recently did Causeway, a movie I really enjoyed its story in. But then I saw my girl was going to be doing the cinematography, and it. That's Ooh. it. That's it. All right. That's it. Okay. That's it. If you're an intercut listener, intercut watcher, I'm not explaining anymore. Look at the movies right here Power of the Dog, Ari Zola, Wegner. Wonder. It's all for you need to know. The audio people. Ari Wegner in a movie is all I need to know that I need to be seated in a theater. This is a theater pick for me. So, yeah. A lot of great ones from the premieres. Pod Generation, Jama Joya, Fairyland, Eileen, Landscape. You mentioned You Hurt My Feelings. Uh, Zach will be the only one watching Rotting in the Sun. <laughs> it's so many good movies coming out of the festival. Yeah. So many picks. Everything that you need to know, I can guarantee you right now. You find me another video that's going to break down as in-depth on all this Sundance stuff, I'll subscribe to your Patreon right then and there. But until then, hopefully we have been able to add something new on the horizon. It doesn't have to be for Sundance. All of these movies will come out sure, slowly but surely. Uh, and hopefully there's something new on your list. If you're going to Sundance, stay tuned. Over on the Intercut Pod, we will be sharing all of the extra links for the virtuals that we may be able to have. We will be letting you know what our top picks are. We'll be covering the festival with our entire group as of right now. We got some Car- Carscast boys going, some <laughs> Jedis going, some <laughs> Intercut fans there. It's going to be a really good festival. It feels like the return of Sundance since 2020 yeah. because we will be there. Um, and hopefully... Uh, you are now prepped. You know what tickets to get. If you're going to be over there, hit us up. One of the best things yeah. that we've loved doing is helping people figure out where to go. I mean, online is the easiest way to reach the most people. But if you're over there, definitely uh, reach out to us. Let if us know you what you're watching. If you need recommendations for pizza or Mexican food, food. or Chinese food. <laughs> Why is it always Mexican food? It's in Utah where we eat the most Mexican food. <laughs> well, they, they don't have the Red Iguana other places. They don't have, yeah. But Red Iguana too? Uh, hopefully we added some stuff to your radar. Hopefully you're a little bit more well-versed on what to do for the Sundance Festival. Um, and anything else, any questions that you have, hit us up over on the Intercut Pod on Twitter. Let us know down below in the comments section. Zach, let them know where they can uh, ask you any questions. Yeah, with. you can find more from me, Zach Shevich, by following me on Twitter, Instagram, or Letterboxd, at Zshevich, that's Z-S-H-E-V. Was there a V movie in the program? I could I should have looked that I up. I wish, but there were a lot that were very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I-C-H-N. Check out my YouTube or TikTok channels at Multiplex Show Art. Where can people find more from you? You can find me over at LME Explain, talking about all the movies that I'm watching on Letterboxd, on Twitter, on YouTube. Hit me up so I can let you know what the best socks are to wear because you think. What's the advice you need? And someone tells you socks, you go, yeah, whatever. By the second year, you're letting other people know it's the socks. Socks. It's the socks and the sunglasses when you come out of those very sunny Sunday and screenings. But you can follow me every week here on the Intercut Podcast where we're going to be talking about all of the new releases, everything that you need to know, all the weekend must-watches after credits. Uh, but as we reach the, the what is it, January 6th date of the tickets, feel free to let us know all your questions down below. And until next time, keep watching movies, and we'll see y'all later.